Yep. Well, if there's well. nobody else, if there's nobody else, I can quickly mention something I had in mind. But okay. Yeah, I don't want to keep people on. Um. So. So my pitch is, okay, let me back up a little. So um, last year in 2020, at um, the India and Australia Write the Docs and at the Prague Write the Docs, at each of those conferences, there was a talk on onboarding. One was about switching to remote and having to, you know, figure out how to onboard writers in that kind of an environment after pivoting unexpectedly. And the other one was about coming in and having to navigate and onboard yourself. So... Um, one of the things that I've done recently is when I when I joined Google in 2019, um, it was it, it was like seeing all over again all the onboarding gaps that happen for people who come in with a writing role. There's no information during general onboarding about what a writer should do. There's often a lack of career information, um, and even when you get the information and you're talk you talk about things like performance. Um, how do you prove that you've done something as a writer? How do you show that you've met your goals? Um, a lot of that stuff just isn't provided. Who are your stakeholders? Um, a lot of that stuff just doesn't come out in general company onboarding, and that includes Google. The onboarding is very focused on engineers. So when I started, I found everybody was struggling. They went through the same thing I did. And I reached out to some people who um, were interested in changing things, and I formed a team. And we now run an onboarding program unofficially. It's not part of the Google onboarding for, for everybody, but we, re, we, we are set up with the um, onboarding team and we reach out to writers as they come in and we've set up education. And we, like last year, we did a lot of hiring. We hired dozens of writers um, and we've been able to, to successfully do that remotely using the education we built. Now, what I wanted to do is, what I wanted to pitch was, um, the title is Level Up, um, basically setting up a new writer to thrive. And the idea is taking some of the lessons from the education that we built and not looking at, you know, let's do it the way Google does, but looking at our approach, like what our core values are, what principles were behind it, our process in building the education and leveraging not just my knowledge from Google, but from doing things like I talked about how I've worked with acquisitions, um, I've had mentoring roles and team lead unofficially and, and officially roles. Um, so just the various experiences I've had at different companies trying to educate SMEs and writers and acquisitions and what I've learned about educating and onboarding people through that process and laying that out so that when I talk about the Google stuff, I can still frame it as, hey, if you're a lone writer and you have to like pioneer yourself, here's some things you can apply from these learnings. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, so it sounds like you're proposing some sort of principles of writer onboarding or, or what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So whether it's your first writer or your 50th writer, here is a way to look at onboarding your writer, developing your education, and then providing them with a pathway beyond that initial education to help them succeed. I would be curious if about... If I may chime in. Oh. And... Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to say I, I find this I find this very helpful as well because I am a little writer and I know that we've talked on my team about expanding and I find that that thought terrifying um, because I'm a lone writer and I started uh, the documentation project at our um, at our company from scratch and I take ownership over it and I would be very I, I would I would be lost you know, to kind of, um, to bring someone in right now. And especially because I'm so busy right now and trying to manage all these projects and, and maintain everything, the documentation. So it would be very helpful to, um, you know, hear this, this type of advice from someone that has actually onboarded and has a program for it. Um, some, and I think my, uh, I think the leadership at my organization will also find it helpful. Yeah. Um, time on top of that, 
piggybacking on top of that, it's like I'm in the same boat. I'm the loan writer, loan tech writer in my organization. And it's always been talk about documenting my own role in case we get somebody else to help or if I'm pulled in to do some other high profile project or something else like that. And I'm interested to learn if there are tried and true or success, success stories of how to, how to effectively onboard your first tech writer or 50th or 100th, making it so it's repeatable and scalable. And right. also using the process of what did you learn after you onboarded the last person? How does that um, tie in with, um, would you change anything the next time? And just seeing like a little cycle or spiral of streamlining, improving, and just making it a robust and very important and valuable um, process. Yeah, absolutely. And, and part of what, what we've done with this program, it is, it, it is very iterative. So we actually survey people after they go through, after they go through the courses so that we get the feedback, we see what's working, what's not. So there's a lot of that that's built in. And then as we onboard people, we really try to foster this documentation culture so that if people see something that isn't working, that they feed that back or that they contribute to that documentation because they're the best people who know how well that's working for somebody who's new. Once you're sort of deeply into the, the company, I mean, I've, I've only been with them two years, but I mean, I've been lo there long enough that I'm starting to lose sight of what it is to be new and have that fire hose of information coming in at you. Is your on onboarding package public or published in any way? I'm sort of visualizing a commercial off-the-shelf software <laughs> for onboarding writers that you could almost sell. That would be awesome. Um, I don't think I'd be able to share details of it, but um, I will be talking about what kinds of content we do provide, like how, how we structure our, our program. And what I also intend to do is point to um, GitLab, which has a lot of their documentation fully public, they're fully remote company, and they have a lot of things about, you know, what's the documentarian's role, and what are the expectations for different job levels, because there are a lot of things even like that, as, as a lone writer, you come in and it's like, are you reporting to marketing? Does that mean that, you know, your only option is to move laterally, or maybe, you know, have some writers come in with you? Does that mean you take on a management role? Does that mean that you are just going to take on more responsibility and not be promoted. Um, if you are going to be a manager, are you still writing? Like there are just all these things that are going to be unclear and that you have to pioneer if you're new. But if you have then people who are aware that they're hiring their first writer and these are the kinds of questions that would be helpful for someone to, to succeed. You know, even if you don't have a lot of technical writing background hiring in that new person, you have context you can provide for that person who's coming in so that they can feel confident to at least help set those boundaries. I have to admit, as a writer for GitLab, you've piqued my interest. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, to set this up in a proposal that's sort of uh, uh, digestible. I think you'll need to pick some key lessons learned or key things that you can put in an onboarding package that people can take take uh, to their own companies. Right. That makes sense. Uh, I don't know if we have any other feedback or others. So. I, I mean, I wish we, we had the whole, whole group with us, but things happen. Any other thoughts? Uh, do you think, do other people on this course still on the call think that this, this is useful and or what, what would they need to make it useful? Uh, I think it's useful and I agree with um, some of the sentiments shared by other folks of you know, when you're a solo writer, it's often so hard to take a step back and document your own role to even effectively be able to onboard someone else. Um, and so like having somebody else take a step back and, and have that be a part of the conversation, I think is, is important 
to this type of topic. Yeah, and we talk so much about like documenting your code as you go, but it's like we don't really spend much time about documenting your work, like your yeah. responsibilities and duties. Yeah, one of the best teams that I've, I've worked on was a team where the entire development team had a doc culture. So there was a developer handbook, but we also had a wiki where the writers were just in the habit of if there was some new information, you would write it down. And that made all the difference in the world when we had someone new come on. Yeah, I could just see this being valuable just from, I, I mean, we're kind of like in the lone wolf idea where we have people only kind of part of time working on documentation. We don't have like a full full time team of it. So it'd just be interesting to see how those teams organize themselves to see if there's processes that we can use to make ourselves more efficient or whatnot. And then yeah, the, uh, the uh, forever getting hit by a bus idea of uh, how we're going to make yeah. sure that and that's the thing is I've been bus number one be of one before where it's like, okay, oh, you're going to do another job. Can you write down everything in your brain before you leave? And so I've gone through that enough times that I've just gotten into the habit of writing things down before that happens. <laughs> yeah. I, I end up writing things down when I think like I kind of anticipate that someone someday will want the instructions to something written down so i just write them down for myself and eventually it pops up <laughs> it's just i think you kind of i don't know i've gotten into the habit of that yeah. plus then i remember stuff <laughs> so. yeah or if three people have asked you about it it's probably worth writing down right so yeah <laughs> yeah Okay, well, th thanks everybody. It's, that, that's really helpful and I will probably try to look into at least putting some kind of framework together so that, you know, even if I don't have the ability to discuss everything that we're, we're, we're doing, I can at least provide some kind of framework that talks around it. <laughs> so. And as Rose said earlier, um, you don't have to have the entire piece written down. It's just abstract away. As yeah, it was, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nicola, I'll be happy to, well, I mean, I guess I need to see what kind of onboarding materials from GitLab that we can share, we can share with you, but uh, if we can, I'd be happy to support you, any presentation that you might set up in that way. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, as I was saying, I, I, I feel like even just being able to, to look at what you already have publicly provides some information about job context, because even that baseline is often missing when people join a company. So. Great. Ping me if I don't get back to you in a couple days. Cool. Sounds good. And with that, I, I guess uh, the only other people who have, well, I mean, uh, Stellina, Rose, Mo, I don't know if you have any proposals in mind or? No, because I'm, um, work volunteering this conference. I'd rather focus on that. So, oh, by the way, thank you so much for organizing this, Mike. Hey, it's, it's been a blast and, uh, and we've done it a few times. So I felt like I could take the ball. Yeah. Um, I, I have a proposal. I, I, I can probably talk about it pretty quickly. Okay, go ahead, um, Stalina. Okay, thank you. Still on. Um, yes, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, Steli is much easier. So I, I usually respond to anything with an S. It's kind of like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, so what um, my idea is, I guess, I guess more of a case study. Um, and I, throughout this conversation, I kind of sort of came up with a title that I think will be catchy and uh, would work. Um, so it would be building docs is building a docs code or no from zero to 60 building a docs code solution. Um, and that's based on my experience, um, starting in being the first technical writer in my role and the leadership team at my organization, they had a vision and desire to capture documentation and improve software usage, but we lack the foundation. Um, three years later, we built this Docs code solution from scratch. It's based on Hugo, and we have an ASP.NET 
core middle layer that creates um, a permissions-based knowledge base um, for our entire business. And the content, um, because of that, is served to four different audiences based on their roles. And I, the, um, the lessons learned were kind of more about the, the exact process. Like along the way, these are the skills or the things that, you know, um, that I've learned using Git for version control, GitHub for issue tracking, um, you know, markdown to update content and uh, manage release node content and those kinds of things. Uh, running the project locally, confirming updates, and then pushing up changes to our GitHub repo, um, and then undergoing a code review. Um, testing, uh, which I do a lot of, so just because a lot of the times people don't tell me how things work and I have to figure them out on my own. So testing and then um, uh, deploying changes. We have an internally uh, developed Git GitHub application that uses ProBot. So that gives me the freedom to release like every day if I need to. Um, so I kind of pull in uh, PRs and release when I need to. Um, so the things I was going to talk about, you know, is, uh, I mean, that was kind of the abstract. Um, and I was going to go into some of the challenges, you know, of being a, a loon writer and the things that I've struggled with and had challenges. Uh, for example, moving really fast and struggling to stay up to date with the documentation, um, getting better coordinating efforts, and I think some of the presentations that people had in mind here, getting better coordinating with, you know, other internal uh, units to kind of release features and have the documentation as part of releases, because sometimes we don't think about that part and then we want to release something and they're like, do you have the documentation ready? I'm like, whoa, we're releasing this? <laughs> um, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, just getting up to speed on, you know, technologies that you have to learn as part of the docs um, is code approach. I guess it's kind of specific in our case. Um, and other things like learning about the business, um, business side of, you know, your organization so you know how to organize content logically because sometimes you're like where does this go how does this fit in in the entire picture and I think we also talked about while it can be having a blank slate can can mean a lot, a lot of freedom it can be really nice because you kind of like set the precedent but it's also terrifying in a lot of ways because you don't have the foundation and in my case, I don't have other technical writers that could look at this and say, whoa, why did you do this? This is ridiculous. You need to, <laughs> you need to rethink it. Um, so those were kind of the things that I thought maybe other people would, um, you know, sh uh, share an interest in. But that's kind of, that's kind of it. It sounds like you're... Uh maybe I'm tired, but it sounds like you're describing a ton of different things and perhaps need to focus on a specific aspect. I don't know what you, what among that you feel most passionate or knowledgeable about. Um, probably I was more, I think my focal point was kind of like, and I didn't know if this was something that would be valuable, just how the DOCSIS code approach works in our organization, being part of the development team, and how what I do integrates with them. So that, that was, I think, what I wanted to focus on. But I'm not sure if that's something that other people would find valuable. Well, I mean, I know there's, uh, there's a split in Write the Docs. Yes, lots of people know Docs, docs is code, but, but like with, uh, with, with Swap Neil's discussion about uh, Markdown and API and, the, and those types of tools, there are lots of people who don't. I mean, it, there is a divide there. It, are there, uh, to take the analogy further to Swap Neil's talk, are there uh, gate, gateway drugs that help people implement Docs as code? Okay. Yeah, that, that was actually a good, I, 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 that was an, I mean, an interesting way to think about it too, to kind of like bridge the divide. Yep, I mean, do we definitely want to bring 
our whole audience up, up to speed. Yes, it's pop. Docs's code is popular, but the, there's a whole. I guess I'm repeating myself, but there's a whole sub audience that say, "Well, well what, what do I need to do to get there?" Yep. Okay. okay. I and think if, in. The, go ahead. If you can help help them, that that would be a valuable talk. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Kind of looking at it from like, if you want to use that approach, how do you go about it? Is that uh, how do you implement? How do you convert from a Microsoft Word environment? Say. Okay. Cool. I will make it more concise. <laughs> Uh, Brian, Rose, uh, Mo, do you have any, any other thoughts to add? Uh, I guess like my biggest thought is it just feels like this doc is code, docs as code idea is kind of just catnip to the community. So I think there's just always unique perspectives that you can share from that that would be helpful to others. Thank you. Well, with that, I know we're at, at, at two hours and I guess speaking a little bit selfishly, I'm hungry. It's about dinner time <laughs> here on the West Coast, so. And you still have daylight? Uh, well, I, ha I have fake daylight. Is this is, oh, this okay. is, this okay. is my, uh, <laughs> I, I call it my grow light. It's for seasonal affective disorder. Okay. People are just like plants. They need uh, water and sunshine. Yeah, that's, yep, that's great. Very true. That's beautiful. Well, thanks, Mike. That was uh, really informative, and I know a lot of people got a lot out of it. So it was nice for you to bring this to a larger stage and get a couple more people in your audience. And I'm, I know they appreciated it. So yeah, likewise. I really appreciate you putting this together. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, if you have other questions, you're welcome to ping, uh, ping, ping me in chat or ping each other. And we'll follow up and hope to see some more proposals soon. Yeah. And uh, Mike, are you going to try and post this on the Write the Docs um, YouTube or the Portland Write the Docs one? I know you're Once I figure but... out how to, uh, how, how to s send the recording in that way, yes. Sweet. You mean the trees in that one? Yep. I'll let you know. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Right.